The last thing that I want us to cover in this introductory section for computer science is a real philosophy about the errors that are going to happen as we're learning to code. Now, every programmer in the history of programming has made mistakes, even the great Grace Hopper. And in fact, most programmers make lots and lots and lots of mistakes. You make them early on in the process because everything is totally brand new to you. And in fact, what I want to point out to you is that that's good. It is not a fundamental failing if you are having errors in your code. That is all part of the process and it always will be. If you talk to any computer programmer today, including Professor Kabalowitz, who is an Academy Award winning professor at our institution, he talks all the time about making mistakes as part of coding. It's just part of life. And in fact, you don't typically get better at making mistakes as you go on. I guess what I mean is you don't typically make fewer mistakes the longer you've been coding. That's just not how it goes. So what you really need to work on is developing a philosophy about errors, that that's just part of the game. It is absolutely not a personal reflection on you or your programming abilities. And in fact, we can take this philosophy further because there have been lots and lots of studies that show that we learn more from making mistakes than we do from just doing things right all the time. And so because you're learning a brand new skill, you are going to make mistakes. And you have to try and tell yourself that that's good, that that's part of the game, and that that's not personal. It's not a reflection on you. You're learning a brand new language. In any language class you would learn, you would make mistakes, more so in the beginning, but entirely since it's not your native language over time. Children take years to learn the English language properly. I took five years of French in high school and I still make many, many mistakes when I speak that language. You should expect this. It is very normal and please be patient with yourself. It's also okay to be frustrated when this happens. That's also normal, but try your hardest to be patient and not take things personally. When you make mistakes, which will inevitably happen, try your best to learn from them. Google them to try to figure out what's going on. If Googling doesn't work, reach out to me, reach out to the tutor for the class, reach out to others. Once you figure something out, enlighten us. Help other people to understand so that they don't make the same mistake. I promise that if you are making a mistake, somebody else is making the same mistake and they will really benefit from what you've learned. This is something that we're gonna bake into the fabric of our class helping each other and passing on information to one another. And so please try to use the mistakes that will happen when programming as a way of embracing that philosophy. Now, there are two different types of mistakes that one typically makes when they're programming. They're called syntax errors or semantic errors. So computer programming languages are languages just like anything else and any language has rules uh, grammatical rules of that language, and we call those types of things the syntax of the language. So for example, with the English language, if we look at the sentence that we have on the page here, it's just a harmless little bunny, isn't it? We see problems with the way that sentence is written down. We don't typically put capital letters randomly in the middle of a word. That bothers us. And the contraction on this word isn't is incorrect. Those are rules that children spend a long time learning when they're learning the English language or any other language, and there will be rules just like that when we start diving into Python. Rules about there needs to be a colon here in order for that to register. We need to indent if this is part of the body of this part of code. Those rules are the syntax of the language, and if we don't abide by them, our code will not work properly. However, there's a second type of error called a semantic error, and that's not an error in the grammatical structure of any type of language. A semantic error is an error in the meaning of what you're trying to communicate. Now, you might be channeling your Steve Irwin, or you might 
be a huge animal rights activist, but generally most people think of crocodiles as fairly terrifying creatures. So if we say something like, it's just a harmless little crocodile, isn't it? We're probably either being sarcastic or that's not what we mean to communicate. That's not a thing that we say about crocodiles, that they're entirely harmless. And so that would be a semantic error. So the sentence that we have written right here doesn't have any grammatical issues, but the sentence by itself is a little bit off-putting, a little bit strange, and we may not actually mean that. Another example of a sentence with a semantic error in it would be if we said something like, the cat barks loudly. Barking is not a thing that cats do. That's not what you mean, is it? There's some sort of communication error that's happening when you have a semantic error. So you can have sentences that follow the grammar of the language perfectly, but they aren't really what you're meaning to communicate. We'll wanna be on the lookout for both of these types of errors because they're very different types of errors in nature and they're caught in your code differently. So when we're talking about the types of errors that you make, syntax errors are typically easy to catch. The more you learn a language, the more you practice those grammatical rules, the more natural they seem to you and the easier they are to find. Not to mention our IDE will have some tools built in for us to help us identify syntax errors. However, semantic errors are generally much more difficult to find. A compiler is not going to be able to find those errors for us. The only thing that will happen is we will run our program and our program will not function in the way that we want it to function. And so we will have to spend a lot more time going through our code very procedurally to try to figure out where is the source of that error. So syntax errors may happen a lot in the beginning. The more you learn the language, the less frequent they will become, although you will still always make them throughout the course of your career. Semantics errors you will make all throughout the course of your career those are the harder errors to find and the errors that you tend to make further into the programming process. So when we talk about the different types of errors, I may ask you, is that a syntax error or is that a semantic error? Let's try and find the nature of this error. That's the distinction that I'm talking about. And that wraps up the vocabulary that we'll be talking about this week.